Hello, today we're going to be going over the Salem Cruise Light. It's a 24 view, and it's a model 2024. Uh, we are going to be starting up front here with our tongue jack. Basically, you're going to have two switches on this guy. One is so you can have a light if you had to hook up at night and kind of see. The other one here so you can raise and lower the camper. I'm not trying to do that too much because I actually do have our stabilizer jacks down right now. Uh, but basically what you want to try to do is while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, you do want to make sure you're level from side to side first. Generally, they recommend putting a carpenter's level right inside the doorway, but they have a little stick on levels you can put on the front on the side of your coach. Uh, but you want to make sure you're level from side to side first. You may have to put some blocks down. Well, let's use that tow vehicle to roll onto those guys to get level. Once we're good from side to side, we don't hook from the tow vehicle. Make sure it's pulled away and then level front to back using this guy. And once you've done so, you will go around and lower your stabilizer jacks on all four corners. I'll show you guys that here in just a moment when we come around to the side. Next, we're going to have where our propane tanks are located. You have two 20-pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what we use to test your propane system with. And then basically, this is just a single-staged or just a regular standard regulator. There is no trying to choose which tank it is. So I always like to recommend only having one tank on at a time so you know when one of the tanks is empty. So that way uh, you don't potentially run out in the middle of the night if you had both tanks on because it always seems to happen in the middle of the night. I don't know why. <laughs> Next we got our battery located back. Just standard 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. Back behind that's where your battery disconnect is going to be. Basically, you're just gonna turn this key and it will come out. Pretty much it disconnects the camper from the coach. So that way nothing, if anything was left on, it would not drain the battery on you. You do have solar panels on here, but a lot of the times if your 12 volt fridge is in like the highest setting, um, the solar panels can uh, struggle to actually keep up with the demand that the fridge is trying to call for and uh, on, off that battery. All right, come on. To the side here, basically you got your pass-through storage compartment. And then this guy here is going to be for your jacks. These guys are real nice and simple. I do like to recommend, do not use a drill or impact on this style jack system. You have to, you want to use the manual cranks. Uh, too strong a pressure can actually damage these. I've uh, seen them come in where people was using drills or impact and basically the pressure basically just damaged this. But basically all you got to do is you're going to take that pressure off and then you just lift this guy up and go into the first or the second hole there and then crank it up. It makes it nice and simple. And then this piece here is what's going to lock that in in case it decides it's going to try to work itself down and it'll at least only go so far and then this is going to hold it in place. Whenever you're going to drop these to stabilize, you're just going to release it enough to where you can kind of get in there, be able to lift this guy up, just drop it down, and then from there, lock it in. And then once it gets snug tight, that's all you need. You don't have to over crank it or anything like that. You're just making them snug. Go ahead and show you this guy right here. Basically, it's the bin for your camper. <clears throat> right here is going to be your outside shower. You got the options of hot and cold water. This is going to be the 751 key. Basically, your silver key on your key here. Down below, there's going to be your black tank flush. As you see, there's this caution sticker right here. This is to tell you to make sure that your valve handle is open for the black tank. You want to make sure your sewer hose is hooked up, it's in the dump, you're going to dump, pull that valve, and then you're going to hook up to this. I do like to recommend using a pressure regulator uh, on the water spigot, then a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. Then you're going to hook up to this, turn it on. Well, on the back side of this is a plastic check valve. Too strong a pressure can damage that check valve if you are not careful. The purpose for, the pressure, uh, for that uh, pressure regulator. Turn it on, you'll start flushing that tank out. You'll hear that water spraying around the tank. It's basically a sprayer. And you'll start seeing when that nastiness is coming out or you know your tank's kind of coming out clear with the water uh, off the clear elbow that comes with the sewer hose that does not come with the coach. Once it is done, 
turn off the spigot, unhook from the spigot, and then unhook from here. Next is gonna be your city water hookup. Once again, you're gonna use a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter if you wanna put one in, and then blue or white water drinking hose. Hook up to this guy, you'll be ready to use the water system right away. So down here is where you would dump the black handle is gonna be your black tank. Right now, these are in the open position, so we're gonna go ahead and close those. And this gray is for the gray tank. This, this gray tank is for the kitchen, or I'm sorry, bathroom sink and shower. Alright, this is kind of come around towards the back side. You got your it was tight on me earlier too. Inside this guy here is where you can hook up for your cable or satellite. <laughs> the good it's, news is it seals really it well. It seals good. Let me see if I got make sure that it's working for us. <laughs> All right, back here, as you see, it's labeled galley tank. This is that clear elbow I was talking about. I try to direct my water when I got done filling the tank. Uh, but basically, close that valve. Right now it's in that open position. Then your sewer, your sewer really goes on. This guy does. You do have to use a little bit of pressure to turn it to make sure it's snug and tight on there. Next, you got your 50 amp power cord that does come with the coach. And then around back here, we're going to have our spare tire. It is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. I knew I was forgetting something. Sorry, we got to backtrack for two seconds, everybody. I forgot to show you, most of these guys are usually on the back of the coach. Uh, this is going to be your on-the-go ladder. Pretty much it's a telescope style ladder. It's got hooks that hooks onto that. So you can get up and inspect your roof. It is recommended that you should inspect your roof every 90 to 120 days. So the best way to look at it is usually in the springtime when you're getting ready to first take it out. Roughly somewhere in the middle of the summer. And then usually in the fall when you're getting ready to put it away. And that ladder does not come with the coach. That ladder does not come with the coach. <laughs> Uh, you are able to store your sewer hose, the aftermarket sewer hose you would purchase. Basically, these end caps here on either side will come out, and you can store the sewer hose in there. That clear elbow does not fit in here. I always like to say get yourself an ice cream container, the little plastic ones, and you can store it in there, and then you can store it in a compartment. All right, we recommend on. eating the ice cream first. Yeah, you can eat your ice cream first if you want. You need to have a good time or a depressing time. It's entirely up to you. Uh, this is where you're going to be for your water hookup. Outside sprayer. It's got these two little notches on here. Pretty much you just got to, you got to push and turn to twist it. I don't think our pump's still on, but we might have a little bit of water that was still in there. A lot of times these pieces right here will actually get loose on each other. So you're going to hook this up and it'll start spraying out of here. You just got to turn and twist this to tighten that right back up. Next is basically the back side of the water heater. So with this, the only thing you would really have to do in here is you mess with this switch. Uh, this switch is basically designed for the main power source for this guy. So if this switch is in the off position like it is now, the control panel inside has no power. So you turn it to the I position for like ignite or ignition. And then that's gonna give us power to our control panel inside. And we'll show you that once we have stepped inside. Other than that, there isn't really anything you have to do inside this guy. Uh, when you go to winterize your unit, this does also get winterized. So next, you're gonna have your little outside kitchen area. You gotta lift this up so you're able to pull this guy out. And then you drop it back down so that way it doesn't potentially slide back in while you're cooking. Nice thing is though, is this is also designed where you can take this guy, you flip it around here, kind of helps create a little backsplash but it also kind of prevents it from being able to go all the way in as well but with this guy i always leave this plastic on so that way that this doesn't get too damaged or rusted there are instructions you'll read on how to season and season this guy when you first get to use it next you got your sewer or your sewer hose 
your LP hose here that basically connects to this guy. This goes down through here. And then we'll click connect into here. From there, you're gonna turn this knob down at the bottom. That's gonna give us our flow for the gas. And then from there, you'll basically come to your lighter up front and you turn this till it lights. Once it's lit, you're able to use either the grill top or the griddle to your choosing. And you can take that griddle or that grill top part of it off uh, whenever you're going to use the griddle. Put this little cap back on. And then you got your outside main fridge. Your temp setting is going to be right there on the side. I had a good temp reading of about 37, 38 degrees on setting number four. So just a hair more, you're going to have some nice, good, cold beer. All right, so I stayed down here basically because you got your drain for the fresh water tank. As you see, it will really pour the water out pretty quickly. And then also down here is where your low points are going to be. They're a little lower down there. You gotta, so you got the blue for cold, red for hot. Basically, you're going to use those when you go to winterize your coach because you are trying to get all the water as much as possible out of the coach. So you open up those guys, generally turn on the water pump, it'll cycle that, you know, try to cycle most of the water out. Go through opening all your faucets, hot side first. Once you're getting ready to winterize, you're going to close those guys off, and I'll show you that inside where we hook up to do all the winterizing. To fill that fresh water tank is actually going to be right here. It is gravity fed, so you just stick the hose in and let it fill. Do like to recommend that you go inside and read that monitor panel for when it reads full on the fresh water tank, you want to shut off the water. You don't want to overfill it. Over, overfilling it over time can cause damage to the outside, to the inside where the hose is connected, right on the back side of this. Uh, that water can get inside here and start causing damage as well. This is so you can be able to bring a TV outside and hook up to it. Basically hook up right there. You got a GFCI protected 110 outlet. You got your vent for the stove right there. You're always going to pop this guy open whenever you are going to be cooking. And you do want to make sure you keep it closed when you're not. And during travel. Try to keep the mud divers out of air walls and things like that. Talking about those guys, you got this guy here. Uh, you try not to block this and it tells you that as well. But we do get like recommend getting uh, mud diver screens. They look like a couple eyeballs go right over the, over the front of these guys. Uh, helps keep the wasps and mud daubers out of there from building nests that can create issues where the furnace would not properly operate. You do got your two outside speakers on, uh, out here. I'll show you how to turn those guys and operate those once we step inside. Next, you got this notice sticker here. It tells you to check your lug nuts. It's recommended you should check your lug nuts at 50, 100, and 200 miles. Uh, basically, what I always like to say is, is anytime we're done camping, usually first place we're stopping is the gas station where you're fueled at home. We'll go ahead and check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. You're filling the truck, and you're also checking these guys. You do also want to keep the tire pressure topped off to the max PSI level. Uh, there is a sticker on the side of the coach that will tell you, but these guys are to be topped off at 65 PSI. We'll come back to our steps here in just a second. Basically, we'll come over here and show you the other side of our pass-through storage compartment real quick. Uh, this guy here is going to be your manual crank for the tongue jack. So if there, for some reason the motor ain't working on that guy, you have the way to bring that in. I couldn't remember if they had the light in there. You got the dry erase surface. The nice thing about this is, is you guys run out of something at your camp. Um, you can write it on here, and then you'll have that list. If your camper sits somewhere basically all the time, write what you what you need. Take a picture of it before you go to home. Then you know what you need to bring back to camp next time. To lock your storage compartments, these are going to be the silver key on your keychain or on your keys. All right, as we come back to the entry door, the purple key is going to be what operates our entry door here. Basically, for the door handle, you turn the key to the right, pull it out, and it locks the door handle. For the deadbolt, you have to turn the key to the left to lock the deadbolt. You're also unable to pull that key out. You have to put it straight up and down to pull that key out. If you go to turn it to the right thinking you locked your deadbolt, but you're able to pull that key out, that means you did not lock the deadbolt. 
So whenever you go to operate your steps, you do have to make sure that this is all the way open. The reason for that is because your locks here can grab the door and cause damage to the door if you're not careful. Basically, this guy just sets and locks right in place. These guys are here so you can adjust your feet if you needed to. But the reason for that is because you do want to make sure that this is as flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of an elevation on this can cause issues to both the screen door and the entry door if you are not careful. All right. Here's the step aside. Your fire extinguisher is basically located right there at the entry door. You do also have more vehicle information right here on the side of the door frame as well. You have this QR code right here. Basically, it's a scan me code. Uh, basically, you'll scan this. You put in your camper information and you'll download a PDF file basically for your camper. All right, we're going to go this way first. Basically, right here is where we're going to start. Up top is going to be where your solar controller panel is. Basically, it monitors the battery and it will, once the battery gets below a certain level, it'll allow that current to come through to start charging the batteries. It's reading the battery at 13.7 volts. We are also plugged in. This is the voltage we're getting from our panel, so about 18.2, so that's actually pretty good. And then uh, it just monitors. There isn't really anything you have to do with this. This is also a Bluetooth style, so you can actually download an app and be able to Bluetooth sync or Bluetooth. You should be able to Bluetooth sync to it, not using an app, sorry. Uh, but there is an app for it as well with certain models. Uh, next is gonna be the control panel. It'll tell you the status of your battery. Also tells you the fresh tank. As you see, we still got some water in there. Our black tank is empty, our gray tank, and then our galley, which is the kitchen sink. Next, we got a water pump. We use that guy when we're gonna be using the fresh water tank. And then we got our lights here. This one here is going to be for our awning lights. And this one is for an ambiance light above the slide. Then this guy here is going to bring our awning in and out. Uh, it is actually kind of gusty today, so we're not going to be uh, opening this guy up. But when it is open, there are pitch arms basically on, this, on each one where you can pull them down to adjust the pitch of the awning. Uh, basically, it's meant to be as a shade protectant. It is recommended anytime the camper is going to be unattended to, you should be bringing that awning in. Uh, strong gusts of wind and strong storms can damage the awning and the camper if you're not careful. And then our other switch here is basically to bring our slide room in and bring our room out. Next is going to be our uh, control panel for the uh, on-demand water heater. You're going to turn it on from there. You can set your temperature setting at what you would want it to be. 122 is as high as it goes. You can choose Celsius or Fahrenheit if you want. And then off. We'll go ahead and leave that on for a minute. Uh, this guy here is just going to be for your main lights. Turn them on and off. But you are also able to dim the lights if you're trying to have a little romantic evening. You press and hold them down, turn on the fireplace, and you guys can have a nice romantic evening. That. We'll turn these guys back up. All right. Next, we're going to come into the bedroom area. You got your switch here for the lights. And then this guy here is going to be for your Versa bed. So it'll pretty much lift and lower down. Uh, usually, once you lower the bed, you do have to kind of help the, the mattress push itself down. You do got the area here for a little laundry basket area. You do have closet space on each side, and each side does have a 110 outlet inside basically for a CPAP machine. That's what the little cubby spaces are for. Um, then each side also has USB hookups so that you're able to plug in your phones and charge your phones on each side as well. Right over here is gonna be where you would hook up for your TV. Uh, basically, your TV would probably go somewhere in this area. They didn't necessarily put a TV backer sticker, uh, but most times going to be here somewhere. They're going to have a usually a nine by nine wooden piece in there uh, to be able to secure that. For your blinds or for your, I believe it was this one. Yes, this guy here is going to be your fire exit window in case you're not able to make it to the door to get out. 
Basically, this guy will just flip down, pulls open, pull this back, and you're able to get out. And then these guys here, you can either, they got a strap here that you can wrap around and secure them. For me, I like, I like to be the center of attention, so I like to try to close most of these blinds so your focus is on me <laughs> and not, not what's going on outside. There he is, folks. Here I am. And I'm going to disappear again. Your sliding door. Goodbye. Hello. Hello again. It is magnetic, so it's secure to this guy here. Next, we're going to have the bathroom. Same concept here. Uh, pretty much magnetic. It shuts. It just glides and shuts. When we step in, you got your light switch here. Your vent is manually controlled. You'll open it, and then there's a switch right here to turn it on. <coughs> then we got our toilet. Basically, with the toilet, you do want to make sure you add some water in that toilet, usually. Anytime you go to flush that toilet, there's always going to be some water in there left over. You want to try to make sure there's some kind of liquid in there so that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle. Uh, I usually also like to say if you take some nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of the toilet. Helps everything slide down easier, makes it easier to clean for the cleaner. I do like to also say that whenever you go to first use the toilet, you do have to put a chemical in here. Whether it's the liquid or the pouches. If you're using the pouches, you want to use two ounces because two ounces will treat a 40 gallon tank. Uh, you can either buy a two ounce shot glass that you can keep in the medicine cabinet or you can just go one two and pour it in there if you're using the pouch i do always like to recommend adding water to the bowl of the toilet i usually like to i usually like to put about roughly about that much water in there or so and put that pouch in there i want to look and make sure that pouch dissolves i have seen it in some situations when i'll be emptying a tank that a pouch will just come out. Uh, it didn't dissolve or nothing. Then next you got the medicine cabinet. You do have a bungee cord here that goes on the back. Basically hooks to this right here to help keep this secured so it doesn't fly open during travel. But it does have a lock on there as well. Then we got storage there. Storage down below here and on the side. Your GFCI outlet, so if there are outlets that have a GFCI sticker that ain't working, come and see if this guy hasn't been tripped. Basically, if it's tripped, it'll have that orange light on it. And then you got your shower here. This should always be closed during travel and locked. This is basically your travel lock to lock that in position. Your shower head does have a reducer. Pretty much you can turn it and it just reduces the flow of water as you see it's not fully but the nice thing about the on-demand water heater is that you don't necessarily have to shut the water off and should be getting us some hot water here pretty soon if we look at that control panel it should be showing us a couple of different icons yep we have a fan and we have a flame we have the little shower head icon and the and shower head icon so basically and then that should be going through the temperature should be rising Yes. Well, now it's going. It rose and now it's sitting at 125. At 125? Uh-huh. Now right, it's so back down to us. one. Now it's down to 122. All right. So that's that's the max it's going to give us. So basically now you're ready to hop in the shower and take a shower. The cleaner's probably going to get a little mad because he already cleaned the shower and nice made it all wet again. And now see, now that it's off, there's no shower icon. There's no other icon. The fan's running to cool it down. That is correct. We would add our camera lady's done enough of these with us. She's learning some stuff. <laughs> I listen to you, Eric. Oh, uh, yay. Someone actually does. <laughs> All right. So right here, this is going to be our thermostat. A lot of button pushing with this model. Right now, I have it in the heat because it has been chilly the last couple of days. But you're going to start in the off position. Then you have fan low and fan high. That's going to be just the fan on the air conditioner that would run. Just a second. And as you just heard, it just kicked on. Then you have cool high and cool low. And these two settings here, it doesn't matter what you have the thermostat set to. The air conditioner is just going to continuously run. And then you have 
cool low auto and cool high auto. And these two settings, whatever your desired set temperature is, which I got it set at 65, uh, it will shut off once it has reached that desired set temperature. And then your last one will be heat. Down here at the bottom is going to be where our LP slash carbon monoxide detector is located. It is recommended you should test this guy every 7 to 14 days. And basically all you got to do is just push this button and we're now performing the test. back to green just like that we performed that test it's just that simple that easy you do want to make sure that this guy is regularly working i have seen where some of them have gone bad but these guys do also have expiration dates uh usually five to seven years is their lifespan expectancy on these guys um but if this goes off you do want to take emergency precautions um basically it's sensing something in the coach uh so you want to try to get everybody out the first person out is turning off the propane canisters. The second person is getting anything that breathes out of the coach and uh, opening up some windows. We're not trying to open fans, turn exhaust, any, we're not trying to create a spark, all right? And then we're gonna get 50 feet away for 15 minutes. After that 15 minute time frame, usually one person's gonna come in and I always like to tell them the first place to check is the stove. The reason why, we're gonna come over here and then we'll backtrack. But basically with the stove, your knobs are sitting here on the outside. So sometimes someone just might be sitting here chit-chatting with you. Or, you know, you might be like this and someone's just kind of leaning over like this. Well, they're liable to be pushing a button in or pushing one of these knobs in where it gets churnt like this. Or it gets churnt where it starts allowing that propane to escape. Um, that can It can happen. Uh, if it is not that, you turn the propane on, it does start going off again. Well, you need to have the camper serviced and looked at because there is something going on. Um, now, with that being said, there are some other things that does cause that to go off, such as aerosol cans, like any kind of aerosol sprays, uh, cleaning chemicals, um, and animal gases. Okay, so just please be mindful of that. Next, we're going to have our entertainment center area here that's on the slide room. You do got storage on both, you know, top and lower down here. You got your little shelf here. I'm going to tell you right now, this thing is not holding a TV, okay? It might, it's going to hold your remotes. That's going to be about the extent of that. Uh, maybe your phone if you're plugging it into your radio. Uh, the radio is going to be located right here. You got your remote for that. You got a power button to turn it on. It tells you welcome. It says, hi, how you doing? And then you got zone one and zone two. Zone one is going to be these speakers here. Zone two is your outside speakers. You can have them both on. You can have one or the other on. It does have different modes. Uh, you're able to hook it up on the backside to the TV, uh, so where you can have the sound coming out of the TV or from the TV out of here. Um, same with the DVD. There's just a couple of different hookups on the backside that you would want to read the manual for. Uh, it does also have a Bluetooth mode, so you could be able to hook up your phone to it. Next, this remote here is going to be for our fireplace. You do have the manual buttons on the top here as well. So basically, you can turn that guy on. You got your temperature setting. We're going to come down here so I can see a little better. It'll show you double zero for just that ambiance look. So if you're just trying to have that little nice little romantic evening, like I was saying, Dim the lights, lay down a little small, small bear rug. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you got your fireplace. After that, you got low for the low fan, which comes out of here. And then high for high fan. You got a timer setting from 30 minutes to nine hours. And then this here will change the color of the rocks. Setting number four will transition between all the colors that generally it has. And then your other one will change your flames to where it can be just orange, blue. This one will fade between all the options. And then one is basically the blue and the orange together. That's one of my more favorite settings. I usually like to go with that with the uh, blue rocks. I always think that's a pretty cool setting. <laughs> So your TV would mount on this guy. As you see, uh, I probably wouldn't honestly go no larger than probably a 40. Uh, 
maybe, yeah, I would honestly probably say a 40, um, 40 inch TV. Uh, but your cords will feed through here. Now, where is it going to go, I wonder? Well, right down here is going to be a little handle. You pull this around, and oh Ooh. my goodness, we have a hidden compartment, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Wow. Uh, so inside here, that feeds through. You got your 110 hookup, and then where you would hook up for your TV. As you see, we got our te I got our test TV in here, so I can at least kind of try to show you what you guys are going to have to do whenever you put your new TV in. But also wanted to show you just wow, TV booster. So basically, uh, all TVs are different when you're trying to program them, but basically you're going to go into a menu setting, um, and then you're going to go to channels, and then go down, and then from there you choose either air or cable. If you're using park cable, you have to turn this TV antenna booster off. With this on, this is considering the TV as, or the antenna on the roof as a primary signal. You have to shut that signal off, and then as you see, the image just froze. And then you would scan for the cable channels. But if you're using the air, you're going to go down to auto channel scan and then scan for channels. The top one's going to be for that satellite hookup. That guy is also connected to the radio, so you want to try to have that on so that the radio signal is uh, not too uh, horrible as either. All right, so you also have a dimmer switch here. Um, so with this one... This turns on a fan right here. Basically, right above this vent is actually an air duct vent that doesn't have this on it, but pretty much just shoots straight into here and that fan helps blow this area to cool for the air conditioner. Uh, what the dimmer switch is for, so you can actually press and hold it and you can turn it down. But as you hear, I'm gonna be honest, those fans don't like that. They're not meant for that. Turn it back up. You do that cubby space there as well. Uh, on the top, you got a 110 hookup and USB hookup. So I'll try to step out so you can see. Uh, the delight is above. They do also provide a fire exit window here. With this style here, you just lift these end handles up and the whole window would fling out. It's on a hinge so it can swing open so you can get out. And then you got the lower window as well. Uh, does kind of tuck back there in a little bit. This actually slides. This is in a slid back position right now. So you can have a little extra storage space. But basically this guy here, you're able to pull this forward. And there's this. Steal the camera from the camera lady real quick. Kind of show you got this little piece here that would flip up for whenever it's going to sit there. Because it can also be a table. You can slide this out of the way and it's going to be a table and it would secure right up here to keep it in place. And hand that back to the camera lady. Thank you, sir. We'll and your down. stool for your table is right over there. And the stool for the table is right there. That actually answers a lot of my questions. <laughs> Does it? Because I was actually curious of why there was only one, one of those stools and now it makes sense. Yes, that is that goes with the table. All right, so the next we're gonna have our fridge. Got the freezer top, it's already good and cold. This guy has been on for a couple of days now. Uh, for the fridge part, basically you got your setting down here to turn it on and off. I uh, had this on this setting here and basically we had uh, pretty much, I have one degree in the freezer and this guy was sitting at about 35, I believe it was about 35. No, this one was also about 37, 38 degrees as well. Um, this has also got what they call an off-grid mode. So these two settings here are for the off-grid mode. So what that is kind of set up designed to do is that if you are boondog camping, so you ain't got no 110 source, we still want to be able to use the fridge without killing our battery. And this setting here, it'll actually keep the fridge at a maintained level where your food can still be good, but it's not pulling as much power from the battery so you can get a longer life. This little piece right here, this guy is set up right here so that this goes in right here and then this will lock to it. 
So what this is set up to do is when you're done camping, you want to put this in here so that that way that it can properly breathe and that way mold or uh, mildew will not start to form inside the fridge. Very handy. Yeah, it is a very handy tool. You do have another 110 outlet there and then a 110 USB hookup over here. Inside here is going to be um, most of the manuals for the appliances in the coach. Like I said, you do got to scan that QR code for the manual for the camper itself. Uh, basically, the only thing I'd show you in here is going to be this. This is your appliance info sheet. So for some reason, something happened um, and they might need a serial number. You can look at this sheet and be able to get that info. That is actually a very useful uh, page for that. And then, like I said, then you got other manuals in here as well for your other stuff. You got the three bench sheets here. They do have a strap that it secures to. Basically, you set these guys up and it'll just hook to that guy there. Basically, inside here is just some storage access area. You got a 110 outlet down tucked in here a little bit as well, right there. You got your storage, more storage show space. They do provide you quite a bit here. Uh, we got the microwave. Microwave, I usually are pretty self-explanatory. I do like to say set the timer on it. If you guys go out, you come back, you see the time isn't set. That means there was a power failure at the campsite. Uh, from there, you want to look and see if it was from the campsite itself or from an electric company. Uh, generally, if you're at a larger park, uh, you do have the uh, tendency of uh, like surges or power surges because of all the campers that are there. So just kind of be mindful of that. Then you got your hood range where you got your fan and your light. This is not a glass stove top. This is to be open when you go to cook. Flip this guy open. Turn this guy here. And it's going to light. And then from there, just set your temperature. Sometimes when you first turn the gas on, you might take a few tries to get the light. But since I've had the gas on, it lit so e a lot easier for me. For the oven, nice thing is, is that this spark igniter will also light the oven. You just turn it to the flame icon on the handle. You got to press and hold it in and then turn till it lights. And this guy does usually take a few tries to get the light. There it goes. Uh, so if you angle this glass door just right, you can usually see that spark and you can see the flame when it lights. But keep it held in for about 7 to 10 seconds, then you should be able to set your temperature. And there it goes. And there it goes. Then you do got these switch here. Pretty much got an ambiance light for these guys. The other one is going to be for the oven light. Down here is going to be where we would winterize. There is a false wall that kind of goes in its place. But when you go to winterize, right here. you're going to have your hose that goes into your jugs and antifreeze. And then this knob here, you're going to turn. Right now it's setting the setting to pull water from the fresh water tank. When you go to winterize, you'll turn that knob to where it's in line with this hose. And you'll be ready to winterize. Once you are done winterizing, because we talked a little bit about that earlier. When you go to winterize, you're always going to do the hot side first and then the cold. Uh, basically what that antifreeze is doing is it's lubricating seals and gaskets and things like that inside the faucets but it's also getting that antifreeze into the p-traps because the, those p-traps like to hold water well you still got to take the pressure off the lines when you're done so that when you're done winterizing you would turn off your pump go ahead and open your faucets to relieve pressure but then you're going to go underneath and open those low points back up and get all that antifreeze out of the lines antifreeze will still get slushy and it will still start to expand uh, so basically, we're just trying to make sure there isn't no pressure on your lines. All right. Next, we're going to have basically your lounge area. Um, basically, just lift. This will drop down for the bed. Then you do also have storage underneath where you got a couple of totes that come with the unit. 
We we'll like to say, try not to block this. This is basically the intake for the furnace. We do not want to try to block that. All right, and then from there, we have basically made our way back to the door. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.